What's there to say? There's nothing but space in between you and I. It's okay that we change, but it feels kind of strange that you're not in my life. You're the only one that saves me when I'm alone. Hello there, I am Tarina, and today I'm going to give you 10 girly movie recommendations. Let's start! What makes a girly movie? To me, it's the atmosphere, it's the characters, it's the story about relationships or love, is there strong female presence in the movie, is there a lot of pink and colors? Basically, any movie that I say is a girly movie has a chance to come to this list. I make the rules around here. If you don't like it, comment down below. As you can see, this is part one, and that means that I will make more of these lists because there are so many more movies that have a special place in my heart. Movie number one, Pride and Prejudice, 2005 edition. Sparks fly when spirited Elizabeth Bennet meets single, rich and proud Mr. Darcy. But Mr. Darcy reluctantly finds himself falling in love with the woman beneath his class. Can each overcome their own pride and prejudice? First of all, this movie is freaking gorgeous. This is a perfect movie for anyone who has now gotten excited about cottagecore. Watch this movie, enjoy some tea, have a moment for yourself, get some mud on your skirt. It's just perfect for that sort of inspiration. But also, this movie is made by the same people who made Love Actually. Actually, it was quite hilarious watching that trailer because the trailer has the same soundtrack as Love Actually. Kira Knightley, Matthew McFadden, Brenda Blevin, Donald Sutherland. Which kind of cheapens out the trailer to me, but there is a good thing about it. Because it's made by the same people who made Bridget Jones' Diary and Love Actually, it has this kind of an ease to it. These sorts of movies can sometimes get a little bit boring because it's made by these people who clearly have a great sense of humor. It has many moments where you just feel like smiling with the characters. But at the same time, it has this magicality to it. So it's a great movie. It just brings you out to this whole new world. It has a lovely romance story. It's about this group of sisters and this family. And Jane Austen's stories just have a great way of talking about the woman in those times when when a woman's purpose was to get married and then making this story around the fact that a person still wants love even though they have to get married to someone it should be for love. And Pride and Prejudice is just a classic story. You should know what happens in it. And this movie, to me, is the easiest way to watch it. I watched it when I was so young and I still enjoyed it from beginning to end multiple times. He's the movie number two. Clueless. Cher is a rich, pretty, popular and blonde and knows how to talk anyone into doing just about anything. One day she spots a new girl at school, Ty, and decides to do a makeover on her. She's very successful but then realizes that Ty wasn't the one needing the makeover. Inspired by the book Emma by Jane Austen. Somehow through my years I missed this movie. I only watched it later in life when it came to Netflix and damn oh damn was I hit hard by the amazingness of this movie. It has amazing colors, it has amazing attitude to life. I just love the main character. She's a strong-witted woman but at the same time she really has just a pure kind heart. Yes, she is shallow, she is stupid sometimes, but at the same time, she doesn't mean harm to anyone. She's just simple in some ways. <laughs> and I just love seeing her being so strong-minded and intelligent about some things, but then being so inexperienced in others and then coping with the world around her. And again, this is inspired by Jane Austen's novel. What can I say? Her novels are classics. This movie also has amazing sense of style. The pleated yellow combination is just to die for. I still wish to find something like that in pink or mint green. It's gorgeous and amazing. Ow! Get off of me! Ugh, as if! Movie number three, 
Peter Pan, the 2003 edition. Wendy is pressured to grow up faster than she wants. She then receives a visit from Peter Pan, who takes her and her brothers to Never Neverland, where kids never grow up, while also facing Captain Hook and his bloodthirsty pirates. Again with the cottage core, this is another inspiration for that. You see the fantastical forest of Never Never Lands. But this movie, again, a classic in my childhood, watched so many times and was truly fallen for that Peter Pan. He was one of my biggest crushes when I was a child. God damn, he had some charm. Also, I love how in this movie, Wendy has such an important role. Just a classical tale of Peter Pan, made with so much charm and beauty and magic, with great actors and great visuals. I just feel like there is still a great lack of good fantasy movies, and this is just a gold standard one. Great for the whole family. <laughs> Movie number four, Mean Girls. Katie has been homeschooled in Africa her whole life and now comes to high school for the first time. She friends Janice and Damien who see that she is instantly a hit with the plastics. The A-list girl click at her new school. Janice and Damien make her plot to bring the Queen Bee, Regina's status down. However, as Katie continues to spend more time with the plastics, she begins to become one herself. Is there a person who hasn't seen this movie? I don't know. If you are a person like that, freaking watch this movie. It's such a classic and for a good reason. This is a great movie to watch with your mother. At least me and my mom have seen this together so many times. I don't even know what to say about this movie because I think everything has been said already. It's just a great movie. The acting is great, the writing is great, comedy is great, and of course the fashion is amazing. It's such a good movie that I don't even know what to say about it. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Movie number five. The Memoirs of a Geisha. Young Chio gets sold to a geisha house. She has no interest in the profession until she meets a kind chairman with geishas in his arms and then wishes to become one to meet him again. After rigorous years of training, Chio becomes Sayuri, a geisha of incredible beauty and influence. Every step she takes to get closer to the chairman, there is something that takes her two steps backward. Okay, this one. God damn it, this one. <laughs> It's like my favorite movie basically, but the thing is that I can't have it as my favorite movie because it has some problems in it, I know. It's a controversial movie. It has a storyline of a geisha selling her virginity, which was not a real thing at the time. And it was really bad for the geisha who told her life story to the American man who wrote the book about her, which is what this movie is based on. And then there's the other thing, which is that the main actresses are all Chinese, <laughs> which is disappointing. And me as a Finnish person, I understand why that would be really annoying. Me imagining that Hollywood was making a movie about Finland and then casting only Swedish actors just because they were more famous than Finnish actors. That would piss me off. <laughs> then I was talking about this with my friend and she was just like, yeah, imagine them like learning couple sentences in Finnish and then talking with a horrible accent and and it just made us laugh <laughs> because we can see it so clearly in our eyes that that's something that could happen to us. And that would suck. Like, it seems like truly they didn't even consider trying to find proper Japanese actresses. They just chose the Chinese one because they were already known in America. So yes, this movie has some bad things about it, but god damn is it made gorgeously. This movie and this world... I saw this movie when I was already getting interested in Japanese culture and Jumping into this world just made me dive down deeper and truly made me fall in love with Japan even more than I did before. And just the beauty of the Asian women and with these 
with this geisha makeup and clothes. Um, yes, I know the makeup is all also quite westernized, but it still it pleases my eyes. Let me just tell you, <laughs> it makes me happy to see this movie and to see those women looking so beautiful and those places and those traditional Japanese decor and world and city and ah. Uh, I just love this movie so so much and the love story is so beautiful the ending has made me cry so many times and it's not like this horrible pain cry it's this ecstasy of happiness that you feel for the character and it's a beautiful cry i love crying to that ending <laughs> Movie number six, My Best Friend's Wedding. When a Julian's longtime friend reveals he is engaged, she realizes she loves him herself and sets out to get him, with only days before the wedding. Such a simple synopsis in this movie, a simple storyline. The charm truly comes from the actresses. Julia Roberts and Cameron Diaz just have this amazing charisma about them that you just want to watch them in this movie. Like you know that the main character is being stupid, that she's doing everything wrong and she shouldn't be doing this. She should give up and let the guy marry this new girl. But at the same time you just want to see what happens. <laughs> and it's also just about friendship, there is a strong friendship in this movie and you're still like I'm still your friend you're being an idiot but I will be here for you afterwards you will be fine because you have me <laughs> and I like that message movie number seven Jennifer's body Jennifer a pretty and popular cheerleader and needy a shy mousy nerd find their friendship in danger after Jennifer getting in a van with a suspicious boy band. As Needy's male classmates are steadily killed, the young girl must uncover the truth behind her friend's transformation and find a way to stop the bloodthirsty rampage before it reaches her own boyfriend, Chip. God damn I love this movie again a movie that I missed completely in my youth but then I started learning more about Megan Fox and the, the drama behind how the marketing truly ruined the success of this movie it's just so fascinating it's gotten such a cult following and for such a good reason it's a great movie about friendship and and about demon <laughs> but like that's the main core in this movie is just about the the friendship between these two girls and how sometimes you grow apart because the other one is a demon now so you can't be friends anymore but you still love her because she's your childhood friend and you want to be friends with them forever but life sometimes happens and you lose your best friend and that's a great basis for movie <laughs> I actually have a long reaction video for this so you might want to check that out if you are interested it's with my other Finnish friend so you might want to know what we think but yeah basically we both just love it <laughs> this is just a great silly movie with like a great sense of humor it doesn't take itself too seriously and that's the type of movies that I love that have action drama violence blood but at the same time humor and pretty girls I guess guess that's what I just want to watch pretty girls I can't help myself they are just fascinated and my eyes are like focused on them Megan Fox is such a beauty in that movie god yeah her face is just like sculpted okay let's focus you're so warm why are you so warm Shadies. movie number eight I, Tanya. Tanya Harding, the child prodigy who was pushed into skating by her abusive mother, recounts the events in her bumpy life, from her harmful relationship with her first love to the incident with the fellow skater Nancy Kerrigan, ruining the future of Tanya's career. Wait a minute, what's going on here? I was supposed to talk about I, Tanya. Okay, to be honest, the thing that happened was I accidentally skipped the part where I talked about my feelings about I, Tanya. So <laughs> I need to film it today while I'm filming the next week's video. And the video will be 
about my purse collection so please subscribe to my channel so you will know when the video will come up some sunday maybe the next or the one after that but there will be a video about my purses anyway i tanya the movie was just this fantastic thrill ride i love how it has this magical realism about it the way it tells the story but is honest about the fact that it doesn't know the facts <laughs> like no one knows what really happened only thing you can do is just take the story and go with it tell all the f interesting facts you know and show the emotions that the, that the people might have gone through the movie is about abuse in many ways when you are used to getting abused by your parents you probably will get a relationship where there is also abuse and i think the movie talks about those subjects very well just the way the movie is made is so good. You can see the effort that the director and the actors gave to the movie. And I just love how it's kind of a mixture of a documentary and a movie. But at the same time, it's completely done in a creative way that I've never really seen anything like it before. And as a movie about a real life story, it is just extremely entertaining. It doesn't really have any slow moments where you could get bored. You're just so happy to be on the ride. Maybe you're just not as good as you think. Maybe you should pick another sport. Suck my dick. Movie number nine, Howell's Moving Castle. When an unconfident young woman is cursed with an old lady's body, her only chance of breaking the spell lies with the self-indulgent young wizard and his companions in his moving castle while a war is breaking out. Have I said anything about cottagecore? Because this movie is like perfect for cottagecore. I haven't said anything about that, have I? No, I didn't think so. But yeah, this movie, I'm now watching a lot of Instagram reels and this movie pops up there often and I am happy for it. The atmosphere again is just magical. This movie is something that I've seen thousands of times. It's my second favorite movie from Studio Ghibli. The first one is of course Spirited Away but I felt like this was a bit more girly so I wanted to put this in the first video because this has a stronger romance in the middle of the story. It is just so fascinating to watch this girl who doesn't have much experience but still has this confidence to just go into someone else's house and just say you are living in a mess i will clean your house now just shut up and let me do it and then this man who lives in that house just seeing that wait a minute you're not an old woman you're a young woman and you're quite charming actually <laughs> And I feel like I've seen you before somewhere, but I don't know about that. All I know is that I like having you here. Hayao Miyazaki has this way of making characters non-black and white. Like, there isn't really the evil ones and the good ones. They are just people who might do bad things. You might even like them at some points, even though that they did some horrible things. It is just this group of misfits <laughs> living in this moving castle and trying to cope with the fact that there's a war coming and at the same time you're cursed with the spell that makes you be old. <laughs> it's a lovely movie, just beautiful. And the freaking soundtrack is just breaking my heart. It's so good. So you are going away. Please, Hal, I know I can be of help to you. Even though I'm not pretty. All I'm good at is cleaning. Sophie! Sophie, you're beautiful! Well, the nice thing about being old is you've got nothing much to lose. Movie number 10, About Time. In Cornwall, London, Tim lives a pleasant life with his family. At the age of 21, his father discloses a family secret to him telling that the men in his family have the ability to travel in time. Tim decides to use this power to find true love. During his life, he uses his gift to fix not only his errors, but also the lives of people close to him. The last movie is what I say 
is my favorite movie even though the memoirs of geisha is probably really my favorite movie but just because it's so controversial i don't want to say that it's my favorite but this movie is like a close second so i'm just like about time is my favorite movie don't think about it and no one knows this movie and it's so good I love it so much. It's a British movie and it has all amazing British actors and the atmosphere is very British. <laughs> it is again a world that I just love jumping into. I just love how the main character is instantly just so pure at heart. Like he's just like, oh, I have this power. Okay, I want to find a girlfriend. <laughs> like that's something that I would probably do if I didn't have a partner already. I would just be like, I will just find someone to have a relationship with. I admire that simpleness of searching happiness to, through such a simple simple want. This movie again is so lovingly light-hearted like you go to this movie and you're just watching a movie on a cloud you don't feel big feelings until you do and this movie always makes me cry it just suddenly takes you to a place that you didn't expect to go and then you're just so invested and heartbroken and at the same time you're just so happy that this movie takes you there like you love feeling those feelings with this movie because you feel like you're safe the movie just has so many amazing characters that are not perfect they have their own faults like there's this scene where it tries to figure out who would be the best best man in his wedding and he just tries out all the guys around him and everyone makes a horrible speech and it's a very funny scene but at the same time it, it tells the people you love aren't perfect there's faults in everyone they are just different faults <laughs> and it's shown in such a fun way this movie just has such a big heart i love watching it would it be very wrong if i asked you for your number no just in case I ever, you know, had to call you about stuff. Mm. Okay, that's it. 10 movies that I want to recommend to you to watch. Did I get you interested in any of them? I hope I did. I really like these movies. I hope you subscribe to my channel to know when I will make the part 2. I try posting videos every Sunday or every other Sunday. Please like this video to make more people see it and have a great week. You, you want a kiss? I will give it to you anyway. What is consent? I don't know. Just have the kiss. No, have the kiss. Mm. Have it and enjoy it. Bye.